What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and joining me for this review of Life After Lockup, Season 4, Episode 18. Let's talk about Puppy and Amber. Let's talk about Puppy and Eric. I'm not even going to go into the conversation that Puppy had with Big Mama and Amber and how they were trying to convince her to leave Eric and know your worth and stand up for yourself. I don't even, I'm not even going to go into that. Puppy wants to be with this man, Eric, and she's going to be with him until she decides she no longer wants to be with him. So whatever they got to say to her, it does not matter. The heart wants what the heart wants. So there's no point in talking about it because she's not going to leave him now that she's pregnant by him who knows she's not going to leave him right now so there's just no point in us even discussing what's good for puppy what's better for puppy the heart wants what the heart wants she's with eric now and those are the facts that we have to deal with so she finally okay first of all before i even go there her and eric get into an argument over amber um eric thinks that amber has too much of an influence over puppy and puppy tells eric well you're not giving me any information so of course i'm going to go talk to amber about the the problems that i'm having with you and so then eric says anything that you want to know just come and ask me and so then she does. Why is your divorce stalling? And he's like, well, I have nothing to say about that. But you just said anything that you want to know, come and ask me. And if she can't ask you, Eric, about your divorce, who was she supposed to ask? Your estranged current wife? Like, come on now. So... Eric threatens to leave, right? He threatens to leave. He gets up. He goes to the door. Puppy follows him. And she's like literally trying to keep him from walking out. Puppy, you're doing the most. You're doing the absolute most. Let that man walk out and leave. Let that man walk out. Don't sit up there and keep a man from leaving you from walking out the door if he wants to walk out the damn door because you kind of look desperate. So then I guess, you know, she feels like there's no better time to tell him to do my pregnancy reveal than to just come out and tell him right now so as they're fighting at the door she tells him that she's pregnant initially he doesn't believe her she runs into the bedroom crying he ends up walking out but he only gets as far as the porch but then he comes right back in so he goes to the bedroom he goes into the bedroom sits down next to her and he's like are you really pregnant is this for real and she's like yeah I'm really pregnant and um you know, she's like, you don't look that excited about it. And then he says, well, I didn't say, you know, that I wasn't excited about it. So they're trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do. It's just a lot. Okay. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, I don't know what else to say, except good luck to puppy. Good luck to Eric. And hopefully they're going to make the best decision for the sake of this child. Cause I don't know what else to say. What else she going to say? Puppy needs to leave Eric. She doesn't want to, and she's pregnant by him. Eric needs to leave Puppy alone. Why? Because she's always going to accept him. She's always going to welcome him with open arms, so there's nothing left to say about these two people. Moving on to Chaz and Branwen. So... Chaz has extended his stay in Portland, and Bronwyn is not happy about that at all. She wants him gone. Um, Chaz has been trying to get in contact with Branwen, I mean Bronwyn, um, trying to call her, text her, she's not responding. And then all of a sudden he gets a text message from somebody named Tawny. And the text message tells him that Bronwyn is back to her old ways. And I thought they were referring to her drug use because sometimes I wonder when I watch her demeanor and her body movements and her behavior I, I, I kind of wonder if she's back using, but that's not what they were referring to. They were referring to she's back online on her escort website looking for clients again. And so Chaz, you know, he looks it up, he sees it, and he sees that the last time that she updated the website was recently. He says up until now, when you he would go to her website, the update date would be from before she went to prison like 2020 or something but now it's been updated more recently since she's been released from prison so she's been you know um you know, click click tapity tap around on her escort website so he's upset about that Bronwyn meets with her friend and um, she tells her friend that she got a call from Yola Yola is an ex-boyfriend that still puts a smile on her face that still puts the butterflies in her belly so she's really excited about hearing from Yola again and the friend says in her own little confessional to the camera the friend says that you know Yola and Bronwyn had a lot of chemistry together there was like a this big spark between them and I thought she was going to say, but 
I don't think they're good for each other, but that's not what she ended up saying. So all she said was that, hey, they were great together. They had chemistry, they laughed, they loved, everything was wonderful between them. And so then the friend tells her also that um, Tawny has been contacting Chaz and telling Chaz, you know, this information about her going back to escorting, possibly allegedly. Now, Tawny, now Bronwyn doesn't see it for Tawny because this Tawny chick used to date Bronwyn's friend Courtney who I think who Bronwyn was staying with excuse me um and Tawny thinks that Bronwyn and Courtney were messing around with one another so they think that Tawny is doing this you know contacting Chaz just simply out of jealousy because she can't stand Bronwyn because she thinks Bronwyn was messing with her man Courtney so they kind of dismiss it like you know Tawny is crazy she's just doing this out of spite or jealousy and that you know kind of hinting at that Bronwyn is not back on her escort web uh, website. So now Bronwyn is mad at Chaz because she, he's been communicating with Tawny behind her back. But girl, you don't even want to be with Chaz. So who cares? Are you, I mean, Tawny is not messing anything up. In fact, Bronwyn, you should actually be happy that Tawny is contacting Chaz and telling Chaz that you're doing this, whether you are or you're not, because you're trying to get rid of Chaz without looking like the bad guy. So this is the perfect opportunity to get rid of him. So like, why would you be angry at Chaz? And Chaz is just receiving information. He didn't go seek this information out. He's just receiving this information from some chick named Tawny. And another thing, Bronwyn said that she had gotten some kind of an alert on her phone that someone was trying to sign into her, uh, her email account. So she called Bron uh, Chaz and Chaz tells her that he was trying to like check her password for some old email address and Bronwyn told him no this is on my new email address are you trying to get into my new email address so she's telling her friend that this is just too much him invading my privacy and being extra clingy is just too much for me so Chaz shows up because he was going to meet up with her at this place so Chaz ends up showing up with flowers and Chaz and Bronwyn tells him oh, why don't you give those flowers to Tom and get the f out of here so now she's angry at Chaz maybe she thinks that this is a uh she's going to use this whole Tawny situation you know to be mad at him and then you know he's going to go off his merry way they're going to have this big blowout fight and he's going to end up leaving her I, I don't know I don't know what the hell Bronwyn is doing I don't know why Bronwyn is even with Chaz to begin with I don't know why she didn't end it before she got out of prison because they all knew what was going on they knew the what's up she just needed somebody to support her while she was in prison and he wanted to communicate with a pretty girl but they should have known that as soon as she came out that there was going to be nothing nothing there because Chaz should have known that a girl like Bronwyn would not spend would not waste one second of her time with a guy like him and Bronwyn should have known that when she came out of prison as long as she kept on taking money from him that he was going to expect something from her from yeah from her and so she should have just ended it way before she ever got out of prison but she didn't now she's here and now she's stuck with him moving on to Sean and Sarah so at the wedding um at the wedding, they were going to do the cake cutting. And they tell the audience that this is not just a wedding cake. This is also a gender reveal cake. So they cut the cake and that cake looked good. Oh my God, that cake looks so soft and good. So they cut the cake and it's pink. So they're going to have a girl. Well, Sean's daughter, Gracie, ends up having a, a, a an incredible breakdown, right? She has this breakdown. Um... Sean tries to go find his daughter to see what's wrong because Kelly's like, go talk to your daughter. So he goes and he finds his daughter and like, you know, what's wrong? What's going on here? Why are you crying? And Gracie's upset that he's having a girl with Sarah because I guess Gracie's the only girl out of his six children. I don't know. And so Gracie's upset that she will no longer be the only girl. And so she says to him, this is like a slap in my face. Gracie, sweetheart, how? How does this, he had no control, I mean, he did, his genetic, okay, look, we understand what's going on here, but it's not like he planned it, okay, it's not like he took something that was going to guarantee him having a girl, this is, what are you talking about, this is a slap in your face, girl, what are you talking about, y'all, Sean 
and Kelly, they need to get Gracie into therapy. Gracie is really struggling with a lot of issues, a lot of abandonment issues with her father. And I truly do believe that Sean could have been a better father. I don't think he was there for his children as much as he needed to be. He was too busy running around chasing criminals or chasing convicts, ex-cons, soon to be ex-cons, whatever the hell he was doing with these prison babes. He was too busy with his prison babes to pay any attention to his children. I do believe that he, that him not being in their lives is causing like all of these this angst and all of this these this these issues with with Gracie because he wasn't there for his kids get Gracie into some damn therapy because she's holding into she's holding in or holding on to a lot of issues a lot of anxiety um depression uh, abandonment issues, daddy issues. She is really suffering because of the situation with her dad. Y'all need to get her into some damn therapy. Why she's even at this wedding is beyond me. I don't think this girl was ready to sit there and watch the man that she feels like abandon her, her mother and her siblings to watch him marry his ex-con prison babe pregnant fiance she was not ready to see any of this this was too much for gracie now i can't believe that kelly didn't have the wherewithal to be like no sweetheart we are not going to his wedding uh you'll talk to your dad or you'll see your dad afterwards but we're not no we're not going to do that because there's just too much going on here for her to have that kind of a breakdown because she found out that they're having a girl there's a there's just there's a lot of deeper issues going on so anyways um and I do believe that Kelly feels some type of way about Sean not marrying her after 20 years and six children. She definitely has a lot of jealousy and resentment. And I'm pretty sure that is spilling into her children because Kelly does not strike me as the kind of mother who doesn't say anything negative about Sean. I think she calls him every name of the book. I think she calls that man um, anything but a child of God. I think she talks about that man really dirty and grimy to her kids. And the things that she says that she says to them may be 100% true. It may be all facts but you can't talk negatively about the children's father to the children or in front of the children it's very detriment detrimental so she also needs to go to counseling try to figure her issues out because the fact that you've been waiting 20 years for this man and you've never had a boyfriend oh does she have a boyfriend i don't think she does i don't think Maybe that's what she maybe she, maybe she doesn't need counseling. She needs a damn boyfriend because she's just too involved with Sean and his newest uh, girlfriend. She's just too involved. She got too involved with Destiny. She's too involved with Sarah wanting to confront Sarah at Sarah's. It's just too much. Those people should not have been at this damn wedding. So let's move on to Destiny. Destiny has arrived at the hospital. Her husband or her strange husband, Jason, has joined her and um, she is not going into labor. It is a false alarm, thank God, because she's only seven months pregnant. And Destiny said that she was very grateful to have Jason there because it showed that he really cared about his baby slash not baby we don't know until there's a DNA test moving on to Kevin and Tiffany. So they're waking up in bed together, Kevin and Tiffany, after Tiffany made this big old show with the dear John letter, here's your key back, whose draws are these after she'd made that big show about that and how she was walking out on him and she could do better. And all, she's right back in his bed. Absolute stupidity so they're back together again in fact not only is she back in the bed with him but they're off to go meet a potential third uh third partner you know for their whatever they're trying to do so they're off to go do that together so kayla ends up showing up at, at um kevin's house as kevin and tiffany are leaving so then kayla decides to follow them and she follows them to the restaurant where they're going to be meeting this third potential mate so she's waiting outside in the bushes watching them taking pictures just just out of control just doing the most and um you know uh kevin ends up going to the bathroom to call her to find out you know what the hell are you doing with look i don't even want to spend too much time on, on these people because every single one of them is stupid because i i really don't want to talk about these people because it's just so oh my god it's just so stupid and unnecessary um kevin and kayla will always be going through whatever the hell this is this toxic this unproductive never moving forward um sex addicted type of relationship that's gonna happen this is just gonna always happen Unfor look kevin is not gonna leave kayla alone because she's crazy she's attractive and she's probably 
really get in bed. He will never leave her alone. She's not girlfriend material. She's not wife material, but he's never going to leave her alone. Kayla obviously will never leave Kevin alone because she still has this dream of them getting married, white picket fans, two and a half kids and a dog named Spot. So she still has those fantasies about Kevin that, you know, he's going to make a wholesome woman out of her. Tiffany, I'm pretty sure Tiffany, she's probably on her way out. Okay, I don't think Tiffany's going to be putting up with this a lot long. There's always going to be another woman in Kevin's life who's going to have to deal with Kevin and Kayla. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what advice to give. I don't know what to say to these people because Kevin will never let go of Kayla, but doesn't want to wife her up. Kayla will never go let go of Kevin because she does not realize her self-worth. So as long as they're in that kind of dynamic, this situation will never end and Kevin will forever be finding a new woman to try to be with or whatever but he's always going to have Kayla in the background and I, got, I don't have anything more to say about that moving on to Deontay and Lindsay so Lindsay and Blaine are on their way to talk to an attorney because she wants to talk about her warrants the attorney tells her that you are facing seven and a half to 30 years so I advise you just to turn yourself in and then see where you know let the chips fall where they may so she's considering that um she calls Deontay she lets him know and as she's talking to him he tries to get all lovey-dovey like she's talking about the possibility of her going back to prison for at least seven and a half years and he's like okay enough about that how come you didn't pick up the phone when I called you <laughs> He wants to talk about that. So when he starts bringing up stuff like that, like, why don't you answer when I call you? Why don't you respond when I text you? Lindsay's over the conversation. And she says in her confession, I had no idea that a person could be suffocated from a long distance relationship. Yeah, girl, you haven't met Deontay, but now you have. Let me introduce you to Deontay. Yes, he could be on the damn moon. He'll suffocate the hell out of you in this relationship. You will have no room to breathe, to move, to blink, nothing. Because it's going to be, you're just going to be consumed by Deontay. Now, Deontay says that he likes a girl like Lindsay because when she was still in prison and he showed this, he showed us a map that Lindsay drew for him and the map was leading from, I have no idea because they live in separate states. I, I don't even understand what was going on in this map, but it was like a map leading to his heart, leading to his house. I have no idea. And so Deontay was like, yeah, she used to do those kind of things for me when she was in prison. And I like stuff like that. I like a woman who's very, very clingy. That's the reason why you, pr you date prison babes, because they're clingy when they're in prison, when they are locked up, have nowhere to go and nothing else to do. They ain't got no choice but to be clingy because ain't nothing else going on. Poor Deontay. He just wants some love and attention. He can only get it from prison babes because he doesn't have the wherewithal to sustain a normal adult relationship with a woman who's never seen the inside of a prison cell. So he can only get what he's seeking, what he's looking for from women who are incarcerated. And for some dumb reason, he thinks that it's going to be the same when they get out. Anyways, so his very buff, bald, muscly friend comes over. And tries to knock some sense into Deontay. Like, look, I see you're starting, you know, you're falling back into your simping ways with Lindsay. And I need you to catch yourself before you make a fool out of yourself. So just be extra, extra careful because it seems like there's something going on with her that ain't right. Because she lives with this other man. Now Deontay has found out that Lindsay is working also with Blaine or working for Blaine. So the friend tries to tell him, you know, his bald buff friend tells him that uh there's red flags all over this and I need you to be careful and so Deontay's like oh I got this I got this and Lindsay ain't like that and you know this big buff bald man keeps telling him yeah I think she might be just like that but the good thing is because this is a real friend the good thing is is that this big buff bald man tells him that well, tells us in the camera that, you know what, when he falls, when Lindsay leaves him and his heart is broken in a million pieces, you know, I'm gonna be here for him. I'm gonna pick him up, tell him to brush yourself off. You know, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna still be here for him. <laughs> That's a really good friend because, hey, some people would have been like, I'm so sick and tired of this. I'm out. You figure this out on your own. 
Moving on to Ray and Brittany. Ray's grandmother comes over to visit him and she brings him a picture of Ray when he was a little boy with his grandmother. And I think Ray has told us this before that his grandmother, I mean, excuse me, that his mother was murdered when he was younger. And um, that's really, really sad. So he talks about how his mom is not going to be there at the wedding, but they're going to have a chair for her um, at the wedding. And then uh, he tells his mother about the prenuptial agreement. I really couldn't gauge if because the grandmother is like very protective of him so when he told his grandmother that uh Brittany's dad has not given his blessing the grandmother was like well yeah that's understandable because that's his baby and then when he told his mom his grandmother about the prenuptial agreement um she kind of like agreed with it which I mean I, I don't have a problem with the prenuptial agreement that's fine but I just assumed that the grandmother would have been like don't you sign nothing but the grandmother was like okay yeah she just wants to make sure that she don't got to pay for your restitution or whatever she said but she wasn't mad about it and so Ray was like yeah but that's my restitution you know her assets will not be affected by it <clears throat> so and the, you know because Brittany's mom thinks that if anything should happen they're going to tap into her account or Brittany's account to pay off the restitution and I don't think that's going to happen like that but I don't know I don't know when you get married and there's debts, maybe you take on your spouse's debts. Uh, so maybe they need a prenuptial agreement on that. Um, then there's a scene with Brittany talking to her two friends about her wedding. You know, they're planning her wedding and what kind of stuff they're going to have. And instead of her bridesmaids, well, I don't know if she's really going to do this because it's probably just for show. But instead of her bridesmaids carrying bouquets of flowers, they're going to be carrying little black clutches, little black purses. Anyways, Marcelino and Brittany, not much to say there other than Brittany had to take a detour to the desert to get herself together before she faces Marcelino. She went to the desert, y'all. She had to get her mind together before she opens up this can of whoop ass on Marcelino. She had to get herself together. She had to go to the desert. She had to contemplate some things, uh, think about her life, think about her next move because she is pissed. So Marcelino, wherever you are, Please run and hide because Brittany is definitely coming home. That is my review. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, please subscribe and I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.